viewers and welcome back to the South Main Huddle Channel. So we've got this 2007 Chevrolet Impala here. It's got the uh, 3.5 in it. Uh, guy brought it down this morning. Uh, no appointment, but uh, didn't think he was going to make it much further. Uh, evidently the battery was dead this morning. Uh, he went ahead and jump started it. And he noticed once he jump started it, uh, even though it's, you know, 15 degrees outside, uh, the cooling fans were running on high speed. Uh, I had a message displayed across the dash that said uh, engine hot, AC disabled, or you know something like that. Uh, he started down here, and apparently, um, you know, the car ran kind of poorly. He's saying, and then he got out of the parking lot, and then shut it off, and it couldn't get it restarted, and the battery was low again. So he's got got some issues going on for sure. Um, I took and went out to get it started. It barely cranked over, but it did fire up. So, I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I drove it in, threw the battery charger on it about an hour ago, kind of get a good charge in it, you know, so if we're fiddling around with stuff. Uh, we've got the scan tool fired up. We're gonna take and see if the car runs and uh, just kind of see what's going on with this thing. All right, so I went ahead and tur turned the key on for us. We'll go ahead and we'll grab the uh, vehicle info here. All right, so we've got our VIN. Single zone or dual zone? This one is dual zone, I know that. Yes. With RPO code UH8, let me go look. All right, this one is with UH8, whatever that RPO code is for. So we've got to diagnose, we'll just go to the engine control module. We'll grab our codes first. See if that gives us some direction here. Like I said, we'll check to see if the uh, see if the car starts too. Uh, to get it started on a parking lot, like I say, it cranks slow. I had to give it a little bit of throttle. All right, so we got a 118 engine coolant high voltage, so that's open circuit. 335 crank circuit, okay, and knock sensor performance. Well, that's pretty interesting. Let's uh, just for that good. Let's just see if the car runs. So here we go. So yeah, there's that uh, message there. Engine hot, AC off. Of course, we got hood open, TPMS light. Let's take and see if it does. Uh... Okay, it did start. Don't know if you can hear it, but it uh, feels like it's misfiring. It's got a pretty, pretty good shake to it. One little pop, I'll be. Uh... Oh, yeah, it definitely has a misfire. All right, let's go look at some scan data. We can look at the scan data when we see her here in the car, I guess. First thing we'll look at is that. Let me shut my door. We'll look at the uh, engine temp. A lot of these GMs, when they're open circuited, they used to go to minus 40. <laughs> so. Uh, so engine coolant temp sense is at minus 40, so that's why we've got that code. Uh, obviously, if we have any misfire data in here or not. Well, let's, uh, there we go, misfire data. Like I said, it definitely sounds like it's skipping. But I don't know if it goes into a, any kind of default fuel strategy or anything. Let's see. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? If we have a crank sensor code... Oops. Wrong button there, fella. If we have a crank sensor code, we're probably not going to have any RPM displayed. Yeah, there is no RPM being displayed up on the dash. Uh, because the crank sensor is a key player in the uh, misfire diagnosis, we're not going to have any misfire monitors so these are all good clues um, so it may not be misfiring it may be just all running at the wrong time but this thing is shaking like crazy okay let's uh, start somewhere here we'll start with that coolant sensor so first thing first we'll uh, find out where this little guy lives real quick here uh, let's see coolant temperature sensor Sometimes it's easier to just look it up real quick in case it's hiding somewhere. Uh, there we go, component location. 
Attempt number two. Okay, so this is the front head. Looks like it is on the end of the front head. All right, let's go have a look. Yeah, we'll leave that charger on for the time being. Let's see if uh, pull this cover off here. It wasn't even attached. Let's go back to the side. Something long to reach down there. Can't reach it, little guy. I'm just taking a plug it. There we go, now we can get to it. We'll just do a quick bypass test on it. Check to make sure that uh, we've got our reference voltage and our ground. It's got a yellow and then an orange and black. Usually the yellow on the GMs is the signal return wire. Uh, I guess we can take a quick quick peek. So poke here. Um, uh, service manual, maybe engine. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, controls and fuel, probably. 3.5. Schematics and oops. Schematics and diagrams. That's what we want. Engine control schematics. Oops. Crankshaft, camshaft. Where is that? Oh, there it is. ETC sensors. Okay. All right. So there's our engine coolant sensor right there. Our yellow wire is the signal return, and our orange or black, which changes to tan, goes to our ground side, our low reference. All right. So now that we know who's who. Let's just check it real quick. We'll take and, uh, <clears throat> oops, my little fella. We'll pop back onto some scan data here and uh, we'll pull up the coolant sensor PID. So we're live data, <clears throat> engine. First, I guess we'll check the uh, check the ground. Let's see, engine coolant temp. That's all we need. So that's at minus 40. Pull that up there on a big gauge. That's fancy. Huh? Minus 40. So we're gonna hook uh, battery positive first. This should be the only thing we need to look to. So our orange and black. Okay, so orange and black, our center ground is good. And then if we apply, let's see, because open, no, open pulls it high. Yeah, because touching it to uh, battery supply shouldn't do anything, it doesn't. Yep, we're going to want to pull that signal down. Let's make sure we got a good ground. No. Turn wire. And nothing. So it is not. Make sure we got a good ground. Don't. I'm going to try to get around this battery terminal. Bear with me, folks. Okay, there we go. Just screw around here. Okay, now we got a good ground. Let's double check this. Okay, well, 
at this point we're going to have to grab a voltmeter and see. I just thought we were going to have a failed sensor to be honest with you. Alright, so I got the uh, that's a voltmeter here. I'll just stick that there for right now. Give us a good ground. Five volts. The ground wire goes right to zero, but we know that's good. Alright, so we already check that. And our sensor signal wire, we just have ghost voltage on, so 0 0.07 volts. <coughs> so that is not good. Yeah, it's definitely definitely some ghost voltage just kind of just kind of bouncing around there. Just kind of open open current voltage or open circuit voltage here. Okay. Um, we can test it at the ECM. Is the ECM good to get to? Can we double check it there, and that will confirm whether or not uh, you know we've got. Um, See, it's got to be open circuited because it's at minus 40. So we either got a broken wire or we got a bad box, one or the other. So the ECM on this lives under <clears throat> under the air box. So I'm thinking I'm gonna pull that brace off to do that. Um, before we do, I guess visual inspection never really hurts much. Of course this runs under the intake. Box! This little mess right here at the end of the intake. Uh, will you hand me a pair of needle nose pliers, Hannah? Um, so let's see. I assume, I don't know if this is the harness. Yeah, it's gotta be it. Let me just see. Ooh. Let's see if we can find any little treasures. May not be anything, but you never know. Ooh, there's one bare wire. Holy crap, biscuit mouse. A little rodent nest there. Move that out of our way. I don't know if the crank sensor wiring runs up here too or not. Alright. Oh, I see. What do I see? see anything. No, that's a uh, that's an injector wire there. Okay, so they've got that one chewed down. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if there's more underneath this intake or not. There's a lot of hay and stuff under there. Hey. So yeah, so that bare wire there. Oops. Must be the control wire because hear me shorten it out. So we're firing the injector because the key's on. Good thing it's control wire because that would just blow in the fuse. Um, so that's the control side of the injector. I uh, will leave that alone for right now. <coughs> um, will you give me a small mirror here? Yeah? Tiny one there. I'll see if I can just look under that intake. Uh, the wiring's got to run under there, and if there's more rodent nest under there, then. Perhaps they did a little chewing under there. Let's see. If I can get enough light under there to see or not. Whoops. Keep firing that injector. Well, I don't see big wads of stuff. But I tell you what, if this is the uh, if this is the connector. Then we can do our test right here. What it, it said, it went from uh, change colors here at some point. Let's see if this is it. So supposedly it changes from orange and black and goes to tan. So there's our orange and black. It's the third one down. Third one down is tan. 
So, I'll tell you what, we'll just uh, see if we can back probe this little guy. We, we grabbed the meter, Hannah. What about a needle? It's my needle that's right next to the mirror. I stuck it in the. So, we'll take our uh, meter here. Get it right side up for you folks. This way, here we don't have to dig down to the computer. Now, let's see. Hold still. Back to battery. All right, we got battery voltage. We'll go in here to the tan wire. Let's back probe it. If we can get in there. Okay, it feels like we're in. Oh no, orange and black. Orange and black is a ground, you dummy. That's why that's going to zero. Dummy, let me get the right color here. What is it? Jeez, it's like amateur hour. Hey, Anna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to agree. So yellow, it's in socket B. But I was always supposed to agree. Oh, well, only, only sometimes. Yellow, socket B, so the second one down here Yellow, stage yellow. Let's see if I can back probe this. Okay. Where's my meter lead? You know, I'm just going to take and disconnect it because I don't feel confident with that back probe. Ah, dang it all. Give me a pocket screwdriver, will you? Seems like I would just keep one of these in my pocket. But they poke you, you know, you keep one in your shirt pocket, they poke you. I need a pocket protector is what I need. There we go. Okay. So now let's see. Yellow, second one down. What do we got? Still got nothing. Uh, where's my needle? I want to make sure that we've uh, we're definitely getting a good connection here. There's battery voltage, second one down. So that's the same thing I was getting at the sensor. It's kind of some ghost voltage. Alright, so we're still heading back towards the ECM. I don't know, you know, one thing we ought to do. I don't know if when it sets this code, if it uh, shuts that circuit down or not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't tend to think so. But definitely, just got some just random ghost voltage there. Okay, let's keep trucking. Grab. Uh, let's see, let's shut this truck down. We can go, we can go talk to the people. We'll take it. Uh, we'll start getting this peeled out of here. Chances are, if we have you know if we have rodent damage over there. Uh, it wouldn't be too far fetched to, to think that we might have some in here. Let me grab some tools. Let's see. Hannah, will you grab us a 13 black 3 8 drive deep? Take it and we'll get this whipped off here. Quick, like a little bunny. Thank you. Usually if mice uh, move into one area, they usually don't discriminate where they go.
longer want. Yeah, buddy. And the computer is underneath all that good stuff. Let's, uh, let's think this comes right out of there or what? Snickers. Jeez, what a tricky little mouse. Alright. Eat Snickers. Weed wagon. Uh, let's see how much wire damage do we have. Just a yellow wire. The whole section of that yellow wire is gone. That's handy. visual inspection. Oh, here's another wire that's broke right here. There's a white wire. I wonder if that's knock sensor or crank sensor or something. So there's one wire. Let's see if we can't uh, section of yellow wire that is toast so I don't know, you guys see what's going on but uh, yeah so we're missing a couple inches of wire there and I think I found it there so there's our wire little mouse poor little guy he's just trying to get warm for the winter eat a little bit of wire Amazing how they can eat just one wire and ruin your whole day. Let's see here. And then just this wire right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That one. It's white with a black stripe. Right there. White with a black stripe right there. So we've got enough wire we can just uh, reattach those two. So that's two of them. Uh, let's take a quick poke on a wiring diagram. I don't see any other damage right off the bat here. So we got one injector control wire that he nibbled on and uh, quote temp sense wire obviously. And a mystery white with a black stripe. So being that we've got knock sensor code and uh, crank sensor code. Let's see if this white with a black stripe is applicable to either of those two components. Well, that ain't too bad if you only nabbed uh, three wires. I've seen a whole lot worse. So when then I pulled up our uh, <clears throat> knock sensor, crank sensor wire diagram, which happened to be on the same diagram. Uh, so you see we've got all grays, dark blue, light blue, brown. Uh, well we got camshaft, crankshaft, red, brown, black, brown, white, purple, white, gray, white with black. Boom. And that is the crankshaft position sensor signal wire. Tricky little mouse. So there. Boom. Problem solved. Uh, as far as the knock sensor code, 
I don't know yet. Maybe the knock sensor, we'll have to check this when we're done. Maybe the knock sensor lives under the intake. I'm not even sure where it is on this engine, but he may have gotten to some more wires. But let's fix these and then uh, kind of take it from there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> see if we can't. Let me grab a different pair of strippers, I guess. Five o'clock on a Friday. Probably get a little nuts here. I'll take and uh, just got a piece of the same size gauge wire. Oh man, this is be kind of pain in the neck. Hey Hannah, we shut the key off. Whoa! Don't what me. What? Shut, shut the key off this little guy before we cause problems. Huh? Big problems. Big problems. Keys off. Keys off. That a girl. <laughs> All right. Pocket screwdriver. Where'd that disappear to? Definitely not in my pocket. Where'd it go? Where'd it leave it? I don't need it. Never mind. I don't need it anymore. You're too slow. Too slow, Anna. Need some choppers. Zip tie. Alright, we'll get this up where we can work with it. Okay. Fancy. We'll just take and uh, we'll solder these wires and we'll throw a little, uh, little heat shrink on them. Grab our uh, our little mini torch, Hannah. Slide a little piece of heat shrink over that. So this car, what's what's kind of amazing about it is, you know, I know the guy who owns it. And he uh, is a daily driver. I mean, this thing's got you know, quite a few miles on it. He drives it to work every day. So it's not like it sits. Uh, but he does live on a farm. So I suppose that's probably where they got the corn stalks from. We see uh, more rodent damage this time of year. I think because the mice are uh, looking for a nice warm place to live for a little while. Winter home, I guess. So I'm going to continue on with our wire repairs here. I'll take the solder this one up the same way. I'll get that other one fixed. And then we'll, uh, we won't even have to verify our voltages. We'll just uh, check our scan data and see if that's correct. And then uh, see what the deal is with that knock sensor circuit. Hopefully, I don't know if that's uh, is an old code or. I didn't even didn't really look, but we'll see if I can get my fingers to work here. Okay, basically it's my first damn job. Come on, hold the hands here. There we go. I shouldn't breathe this smoke in the state of California anyways.
Okay. Boom. So both of our repairs are made, so we've got the uh, wire down here that we fixed for the crank sensor. Just soldered and heat shrink that too. So we'll take and put this uh, ECM connector back together. Put it together the way we found it. Less the broken wire, obviously. Get that done. Put the little cap, you know, got a little cap up here. So there's that, but what we're going to do, so I've got a little bit of tape on those, we've got, we've got special tape. This is Honda tape. This is called rodent tape. This will keep away the mice. So they tell me. So we use this on rodent damage, rodent damage prone areas, I guess. Somebody here? No? Yes. Oh, is that lady leaving? Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to take and uh, wrap up this harness. Hopefully, deter any future damage. It's got, uh, I don't know what they got on this cap capsine oil. Cap capsine oil? I don't know. It's a wicked hot pepper oil impregnated into this tape. And it burns her little mouths. And then they won't uh, they won't touch it. I think I checked into this at one point. I believe humans are the only ones who will, are the only like animal species that will intentionally eat something that's spicy. I could be wrong on that fact, but it's kind of like one of those stupid things that you remember. I don't know why. Look at that. That is totally rodent proof. We bite this roll. Not you, I don't want to bite it. You. Just want to see. So if anybody needs that uh, part number, there it is. Uh, of course you can't see it, but uh, that's it. Rodent tape. All right, connections are clean. Okie dokie. Pick this little guy back up. Alright, let's uh we're gonna need mass airflow sensor to start this thing. And we uh we just turn the key on for us. We'll um we'll go in very quickly. Get out of the glare here. You can unplug that soldering iron too if you would. And we we flick the headlight switch back so his headlights will turn off. Alright, what do we got here? Come on, scent minus 40. I ain't a big dummy, you should probably plug it in. Let me go plug it in. Coolant sensor is plugged in. That's in a heck of a spot to get to. And what do we got? 80.6 degrees. Boom. I fixed that. Uh, started it started up here. Let's see if we got an RPM data pid now. Hopefully. We'll see if the engine's still skipping. We have more problems here. Won't crank. No. Now let me uh, let me turn on the battery charger. All right, guys. So I got the uh, I got the battery charger on 40 amps. Turn the headlights off and let it sit here for, I don't know, I'll give, give it like five minutes or something, get a little charge back in that battery. Uh, the battery in this thing is spanked. Uh, so once that gets uh, charge built up, then we'll, we'll go ahead and fire it up here. I'm pretty impatient. I don't know how long it's been, but... Okay, go ahead and uh, start it up there, Miss Hannah. Woo! Sounds a lot smoother. Uh, we've got our RPM data there. Give her a couple of little rev-ups. That's why I see what it sounds like. That's good. So the sound sounds pretty dang smooth. Give her a couple more little rev-ups, Anna. A 
little miss right there, but definitely, definitely nothing like it was. No dead, uh, no dead miss. Alright, our coolant sensor is working. Beautiful. Alright, you go ahead and shut off, man. Alright, so we'll go back in. <clears throat> I think the, uh, we might have some other codes in here from unplugging crap when we had the key on. Uh, key's still on right now, right now? Yep. Sure? Sure. Okay, you're right, it is. All right. Um, all right, so that map sensor code, this ignition pass, so that's probably because we unplugged that harness. The coolant sensor we fixed. The crank sensor we fixed. The knock sensor was one that was there. Uh, Let's do a little research on that. All right, so I pulled up our code setting criteria. Um, Max sensor failed, base engine problem, uh, setting conditions, that none of these codes are set, but we had a PO335. So I don't know if this code can come in conjunction with that. Uh, knock sensor is located on the intake side of the engine block. Control module receives, knock signals through two isolated signal circuits. Blah, check engine light, okay. Um, so what we can do, I'm wondering, we'll pop back out of this. We'll grab some data here. Grab our ignition data that should have some knock sensor pids in it. Alright, so what do we got? We got knock retard, total knock retard. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. We'll create a false knock. That's kind of interesting. It can detect knock per cylinder. So it must have something to do with the uh, the crank sensor. Because uh, that's the only way it's going to ID cylinders and which cylinders knock and uh, which firing event. So what we'll do, I'll get a hammer and a bar and we'll knock on the exhaust manifold with it running and see if we have any data pit change here. Sometimes this works, sometimes a car actually has to be under motion, uh, you know, some wheel speed uh, in order for this to happen. Uh, but we can at least give it a try. Uh, we started up, Hannah. We'll grab a hammer here. So we got down there. I'm just gonna. I got a bolt right here. Uh, so this is next to the number six cylinder. I'm just gonna tap on it. See if our data pit changes. Yep. So we had activity there. There's two knock sensors though. Um, I'm going on the back manifold now. All right, we had some data pit change there. Uh, uh, go ahead and shut off, man. All right, so I'm pretty happy that uh, that worked. Uh, of course, depending on when the knock, you know, from the hammer, when that came in relationship to a firing event, you know, obviously made the difference as to which data pit displayed the knock and, you know, the amount of, you know, ignition retardation, I guess would be the word. Uh, so because we had some activity there, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave that. Um, I don't know, I assume probably because of the, you know, missing crank signal, you know, maybe it generates that code. I can't say that for 100% certain. Um, but I think, you know, one thing we could do is we could find the wires where they go in the ECM. We could unhook them. Uh, they're a, what are they, a PZO crystal? What they come a piezo electronic sensor so it generates its own ac voltage when it's moved uh, so we could check you know the ac voltage as we're knocking on the manifold uh, to see what kind of signal we're getting at the ecm obviously it's receiving some sort of signal that it can interpret as a knock so i'm just going to leave that for right now uh, i'm going to take and uh, get this car all buttoned back up uh, blow all that crap out of there um, 
you know, we've got to do something with that injector wire. It's not broke, but the insulation's all ate off it. Uh, so we at least got to get to it, and, you know, tape that back up or, you know, get a new pigtail for that uh, injector. But I say for the most part, we got this thing licked. Uh, so let me see if I can get my hands on uh, one of those or what we're going to do there and uh, get this thing buttoned up and take it for a shake. Alright guys, automatic light controls on, take this for a little shimmy, oh, fell way behind, had to run uptown, hope a lady out her car wouldn't start, went up, jumped her car, sold her battery, I think we lost, whoa, I think we lost about an hour here. This thing's good. Got that uh, injector wire all fixed. Took and pulled that out. That wire is completely intact. So essentially, we just taped that harness back up. Uh, that'll be fine. Yeah, definitely no misfire. Car runs runs quite well. Uh, because we've had it running, we won't get a full drive cycle. Uh, but we can take and uh, just take it for a little drive here, anyways. And make sure the coolant temp sensor comes up all the way. You know, I have no doubt that it will, but uh, we'll do that and call it good. The car seems to have pretty decent power. Kitchen, it's giddy up, no light. Well, we got tire pressure light on, but it says service tire pressure system, so I'm sure it uh, probably has a monitor that's gone bad. Hey right, guys, we made it back to the shop. Uh, coolant sensor's working, engine's all warmed up, uh, car ran great. Um, I don't believe, you know, on our little, little short test drive that we've uh, completed any monitors I'm sure I don't know if any of that is uh, any of that's in here probably not typically we've got to go back to uh, OBD2 data which we can do real quick and see but like I said I highly doubt uh, you know highly doubt we've got any monitors that have set yeah we've got three that are okay we've got four incomplete so you know, I just did a little toot around town, but we'll give it back to him. Let, let, let this guy take it. It's Friday, so like I say, they're going to want it for the weekend. But yeah, Catalyst, DVAP, you know, O2 sensors, heater. So typical. Car was warmed up, though. Nothing we can do about it. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, that was a pretty, pretty quick, pretty easy repair on that one. Um, you know, I uh, honestly thought when we first got going, uh, that we we're just going to find, you know, a bad coolant sensor, you know, maybe a bad crank sensor, but I probably should have kind of put uh, two and two together, you know, being that the car was, you know, running well prior to this, uh, you know, or at least according to the customer it was, um, you know, no engine lights, nothing like that, just, you know, went out, dead battery, started it up, and, you know, now he's got all these problems. Uh, the dead battery issue is simply because the battery in it's junk. Uh, even after I had it on a charger for an hour, um, you know, 40 amps, <laughs> just uh, leaving it there with no battery charger on it, key on, engine off, you know, the battery was, you know, spanked within like 10 minutes. So, uh, simply needs a new battery. I told him that he's going to get a battery for it and, uh, you know, get that in there. But it's pretty happy to hear that, uh, you know, it wasn't anything major, you know, any, well, anything more major than it was, I guess. Um, you know, he's happy to know that, you know, it's just a couple broken wires. So, and that's, uh, that's sometimes, that's sometimes something tricky to, you know, tell a customer, uh, you know, if you've got, let's say you've got a couple hours into a car, you know, you diagnosed it, you know, immediately, you know, it's a broken wire, you know, very simple circuit test. You know, we can't do a bypass on it. We've got ground, we've got no reference voltage. Um, you know, had we gone to the ECM and didn't find that the uh, mouse got in there and had, you know, had our reference voltage at the ECM, you know, now it's a given, we've got a broken wire and at that point, you've got an option. Uh, cut the wire on both ends, you know, do an overlay on the harness or go find the broken wire. Uh, it's always my habit to go find the broken wire because chances are, you know, if the wire is broke, it probably broke for a reason. Um, you know, it's either, you know, rubbed through on something and then broke. 
uh, you know, there's corrosion, there's bad connection, and usually where there's one bad wire, there's more to follow. Uh, but I always leave that up to the customer. Uh, it's not my call to make, you know, uh, the way that we repair it. You know, in some cases, you know, if there's an option, I give it to them and, and, and we go for it. Um, and that's it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If not, make sure you give us a thumbs down. But let us know why uh, so we can definitely improve on our videos or what you'd like to see. Uh, you can put that in the comment box below. Uh, put any other questions, comments, or concerns that you might have in the comment box below. Check us out on Facebook, Google Plus if you haven't done that already, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and I uh, hope that you do, so you can stay tuned and up to date with everything that happens here at SMA in the shop. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.